Uh, welcome to EPG Padasala. I am Dr. P. P. Ajay Gumar, Professor of English, University of Kerala. Today we will discuss the novel by George Orwell, 1984, which is part of the paper 20th Century English Literature. The main objective of this module is to introduce the novel 1984 to students and to familiarize them with the uh, ideas and uh, uh, writing style of George Orwell. George Orwell is the pen name of Eric Blair who was actually born in India in 1903. But even though he was born in India, at the age of one he was taken to England. Though he was born in India, uh, he had his education in England and after graduating from Eton, Orwell has to join the British Imperial Army and uh, he was appointed in Burma. Ironically enough, George Orwell later became a writer who was opposed to all kinds of totalitarianism and uh, he was actually a champion of individual freedom. Uh, he actually left his job in Burma mainly because of the fact that he was against all kinds of strict, disciplined, authoritarian regimes. And uh, we find that uh, in his works Animal Farm 1984 and many of the other works, this kind of a, a political ideology is propagated it is true that George Orwell's writings are almost always against totalitarianism, mainly because of the fact that it was the time when totalitarianism began to emerge in different parts of Europe. After the First World War, we find the emergence of Stalin in Russia and Hitler in Germany. And the emergence of these totalitarian states created a kind of fear in the mind of the people living in liberal democratic countries. George Orwell thought that even these liberal uh, democratic nations will also follow the path of the totalitarian regimes in the near future. So he thought that it is essential to fight against totalitarianism and to fight for individual freedom. Now let us look at the important novels written by George Orwell. Uh, one is A Clergyman's Daughter, published in 1935. And another important novel is Keep the SPD Flying, published in 1936. Coming Up for Air was published in 1939, 1984 was published in 1949, and Animal Farm in 1945. Animal Farm is one of the most popular novels by Orwell, which deals with the degeneration of the Soviet Union after the Russian Revolution under Stalinism. Similarly, 1984 also deals with a theme connected with totalitarianism and it is considered to be a kind of futuristic novel because it predicts a future which is very bleak and uh, uh, which will in one way destroy the democratic tradition that was prevalent in the world to, at that time. This uh, novel, 1984, is considered to be a dystopian novel. Dystopian, the term dystopian is connected with the term utopia. So the dystopia is actually a Greek term and it defines an imaginary place or an imaginary state in which 
the condition of life is extremely bad. So it is the other side of utopia. And uh, dystopia refers to a world which is devoid of freedom, uh, which is uh, full of deprivation and uh, authoritarianism and where there is control over man and woman. Dystopia refers to a world which is devoid of freedom, individual freedom as well as the freedom to lead a normal life. It refers to a kind of social system where the authorities have total control over the individual and nobody is allowed to do anything without the knowledge and permission of the authority concerned. So now we will come to the novel 1984. As I said before, it is a futuristic vision uh, that led him to write this novel 1984 because he thought that by the year 1984 the world will come to a kind of standstill. It will be degenerated to the maximum because of the totalitarian regimes that may spread the world over. But we know that such a kind of disaster did not happen. But even then, we can see the novel as the response of a sensitive writer who was very much afraid of the absence of individual freedom and a society where people are controlled and subjugated and put to torture by the authorities. When we look at the novel, we find that it is divided into three parts. And the first part deals with the world of 1984 as seen through the eyes of Winston. And the second part deals with Winston's forbidden relationship with Julia and his eagerness for rebel against the party. And the third part deals with Winston's capture and his final surrender to party rules. So we find that the novel is actually a journey through the life of Winston, the different stages in his life, first as a rebel and then as a person who fights with the authorities and third as a person who succumbed to the rules and regulations of the authoritarian regime. He might have considered this as a possible fate of the world and the end of democracy is to a certain extent predicted through this novel. The novel 1984 is the story of Winston. Winston was actually a, a person who lives in airstrip which is a part of Oceania, a super state. The place names and uh, the names of the characters in this novel are all uh, coinages by George Orwell and George Orwell is well known for creating new terms which refer to the contemporary reality. Oceania is a totalitarian state ruled by the Big Brother. So the term Big Brother later became very popular and it is used in wide variety of ways to refer to somebody who suppresses another. And the Big Brother he dominates the state and the state is referred as Ingsoc, that is English Socialism. And the party controls the society and the party is controlled by the Big Brother. So in one sense, what happens is that it is the Big Brother who rules. 
So Oceania uh, is the state where Winston lives and the other two states nearby are Eurasia and East Asia. These are also super states and these three superpowers are constantly engaged in shifting alliances and battles. So reading these parts, we, we will be remembered of the condition of Europe during the Second World War. We find that these superpowers, they fight each other and often they come for a compromise. So George Orwell is trying to present the political situation in Europe at that time through the depiction of these three states. George Orwell presents the power system in Oceania and uh, he refers to three parties or we can even say three castes, three groups in Oceania. One is the inner, second is the outer and third is the proletariats. So we are remembered of the Marxist concept of the proletarians and the capitalists and uh, here he refers to the proletariats as a group of people who have no knowledge about what is happening around them. They are not members of the party, they are living in utter poverty and they have no knowledge about uh, what is happening around them. So the government do not expect a rebellion from these proletariats. But the inner party members are the ruling elite. They are the dominant sections in that society. And uh, the outer uh, people are the ordinary citizens of Oceania. And uh, this kind of a system prevails in that country and Orwell through this division specifically refers to the power structure that is prevalent in that country. That is the poorest of the poor lives in utter poverty whereas there is a small group of elites who control everything within that country. Another important aspect of the novel is the depiction of the control of the government over the thoughts, aspirations and even the imagination of the people. It was alleged that in the Soviet Union under communist regime there was uh, perfect control over the activities of the people, not only their physical activity but also on their mental activity. We find that uh, there were several news about uh, the use of physical torture uh, if a person is suspected uh, to be having some kind of anti-national affiliations or if somebody speaks against the nation or does something against the nation, he will be taken to the concentration camps and he will be put to severe physical torture. So George Orwell's novel 1984 refers to such kind of control of the individuals. But it is not just the physical torture that is mentioned here. He also refers to the kind of mental torture and the kind of control that the state has over the very imagination of the individuals. In this novel, he refers to the posters of the face of the big brother hanging everywhere and under it, it is written, Big brother is watching you. 
this actually refers to the kind of fear psychosis that was present in the society as they were afraid of uh, a, a kind of police or military attack on those who are thinking, even thinking against the state. And uh, in the novel, the state Oceania uh, is depicted as a place which is heavily monitored by the police through the television screens. And these television screens will capture the pictures and activities of people who are engaged in any kind of work against the government. And they also popularize uh, slogans like war is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. So we find that all these are indicators of the fact that Orwell finds a kind of fascist tendency in the regime that was prevalent in Oceania. They were not only controlling the people physically, but also controlling their uh, thoughts and uh, teaching them false history. So we find that the whole history of the nation is being rewritten by the authoritarian power. And Orwell's ironic comments are directed against that superpower which controls and conditions the mind of the people. As I told you before, George Orwell is known for his ability to coin new terms. Such a term that he has coined is thought crime. Thought crime actually refers to the crime that we commit in our thinking or in our imagination. That means we are not allowed to even think against the government. So thought crime is again a, a crime against the government if we think or even dream uh, something that is against the government. So the, in the novel there is a reference to a, a diary uh, and the diary in which he has written something against the government. That diary can be a proof to show that this person is working against the government. So the term thought crime uh, is a, a, a new coinage by George Orwell which refers to the kind of control that the government had even over the thoughts and imagination of the people. And one more incident that created trouble for Winston was his love affair. He falls in love with a girl named Julia who was uh, an opponent of the party. And uh, they decided to join a group called the Brotherhood, which was a subversive group uh, which fights against the authoritarianism. They were the enemy of the big brother. And this finally leads Winston to trouble and they were arrested and they were tortured in room 101. So after the torture, what happens is that Winston slowly succumbs to the pressures of the government. He could not stand the physical torture anymore and he finally decides to accept the line of the party and decided to succumb to the pressures of the government. So this shows the way in which 
uh, individuals, the citizens are controlled and conditioned by the government. It is not through, not just through the physical torture, but also through a, a kind of a psychological and mental torture that they keep people under control. So now we will come to the analysis of the novel. You know that George Orwell has written an allegory, Animal Farm, which was very popular. And this novel can also be considered as a political allegory. I think you are aware of the term allegory. An allegory refers to a kind of a story which has two layers. It is a double layered story. And in the superficial layer, there will be a particular story. But that story refers to an inner layer. And that inner layer is more important than the story in the superficial layer. So allegory has a double layered structure. And 1984 can be seen as a political allegory. We know that the novel satirizes the authoritarian regimes, the fascist regimes, and we find that he wrote this novel as a kind of a prediction and as a warning because he felt that the society was once again going back to the barbarism, a kind of barbaric state. So in order to prevent the society from going back to the violent barbaric past, he wrote this novel. And this novel can be seen as a reaction to the totalitarian regimes that emerged in Europe after the First World War. If we consider this novel as an allegory, we can see that the state Oceania uh, may be a reference to the USSR. And Trotsky is actually referred in the through the character Emmanuel Goldstein. Trotsky was a person, a Communist Party leader, who fought against Stalin's authoritarianism. And eventually, Trotsky was murdered. He was ousted from USSR, and then he was murdered. So Trotsky is actually referred through Goldstein. And a big brother referred in this novel is none other than Joseph Stalin. And the thought police is actually a reference to the KGB and such organizations which was used to control even the thoughts of the people. And we find that as a political allegory, it criticizes the authoritarian communist regime in USSR as well as the fascist regime in Germany under Hitler. Even though the novel focuses on these two authoritarian states, we find that on the whole it is a novel that fights for freedom. So it is the fight for freedom that is predominant in this novel. And in the fight for freedom, what Orwell finds is that the major threat to freedom at that time was these authoritarian regimes. So Orwell's attempt in this novel was to highlight the importance of democracy, freedom, and 
the kind of intellectual freedom that man has achieved through various struggles his effort was to protect all these principles and to fight against the kind of control of the government over the individual freedom of the people at the political level the novel speaks about these authoritarian regimes but the novel on the other hand also refer to the individual life because what orwell is interested in is in protecting the individual freedom so he refers to the individual freedom including the freedom to think act and the freedom for friendship sexuality etc and he refers to the fact that the authoritarian regimes try to control even the uh, familial relationships and the sexual relationships of individuals and we find that he is comparing these modern authoritarian regimes to the old traditional religious systems where there was such a tight control over the sexual friendship sexuality and friendship and we find that the writer uh, is opposing all such controls over the individual freedom so the novel as a political allegory refers to the wide variety of topics which are connected with freedom individuality and the authoritarianism so on the whole we we see that the novel futuristically attempts to deal with the threats to human freedom that may arise in future and he presents a dystopian vision of such a nightmarish future and uh, this can also be seen as a kind of uh, hopeless bleak uh, psychic state that the writers of europe had after the uh, world wars and uh, this was the kind of response that george orwell had towards such a kind of a political situation in europe and uh, we find that uh, one thing that is extremely important in this novel is the effort to uh, highlight the importance of individual freedom and uh, the kind of the need for peace and prosperity and democracy in the world over as uh, referred before the novel also refers to the psychological control we know that the government controls the citizens through various means one is the physical control inflicted through the military the police and the court etc whereas another kind of control is the kind of ideological control or the psychological control and the ideological control almost invisible to ordinary people the educational system the various institutions the media everything is used to control and condition the mind of the people the citizens are pressurized through a kind of brainwashing and through the propagation of false history and distorted facts 
So all these kinds of methods are used to condition the mind of the people. Censorship is another important weapon. We find that even in so-called democratic countries, there is such attempts to control the free thought of the people. Orwell is speaking about the authoritarian nations where the government is fully in control and they have all these forces to control the mind of the people. So the psychological control by the government is another area that George Orwell deals with in this novel. Another topic that George Orwell discusses in this novel is the way in which the authoritarian regimes use science and technology. He argues that these authoritarian regimes use science and technology in order to control the people and to attack other countries. They are not interested in improving the life and the standard of life of the people, but their main interest is in attacking their, the opposing country and to build up the military and uh, the weapons. So we find that George Orwell is trying to argue that these regimes will in no way help the ordinary people of that country. It will, in, in the real sense of the term, it will destroy the world and the humanity as a whole. The novel also speaks about the control that the government has over the knowledge of the people. For example, he says that these authoritarian regimes attempts to rewrite history, rewrite the past, and they eliminate certain things which they do not uh, like or which is somewhat against their political ideology. So it is the feature of fascism that they attempt to rewrite history and try to control the thought process of the individuals. And not only the history, we find that the government controls even the leisure of the people. They are not allowed to do whatever they like they are forced to spend their leisure time at the community centers prepared for that purpose by the government. And even leisure is controlled and uh, to a certain extent it is uh, put under control by the government. Orwell's description refers to the psychological control over the people, which is found to be very effective. At the same time, it is also true that the physical torture is something that is unbearable. The experience of Winston is a very good example of that. Uh, he feels that he could not go through the physical torture once again. and. Uh, the body and the pain suffered by the body uh, is something that is unbearable for him than the, than the psychological pain that he suffered. So the physical pain to a certain extent uh, controls his mind and he finally succumbs to the government and the authorities mainly because of the physical pain that he suffered. George Orwell 
commented on his own writing after 1936. He states that his writing after 1936 was directly or indirectly against totalitarianism and for democratic socialism. This uh, proves the idea that George Orwell was a writer who fought for democracy and freedom. It originated from his fear that totalitarianism may at one time control all democratic regimes of this world. It is out of this fear that he wrote these novels and uh, his life after 1936 was dedicated for this fight against totalitarianism. So in this novel, 1984, Orwell's attempt is to create an awareness in the people against totalitarianism and to prevent the spread of such authoritarian regimes in different parts of the world. I think uh, the novel succeeds in propagating this idea because uh, it has become one of the most popular novels of George Orwell. It was widely read and appreciated and we find that as desired by George Orwell, the authoritarian regimes uh, failed to control the democratic nations and we have seen the success of democracy after the Second World War. So far we have discussed the novel 1984, its relevance and the political allegory that the novel is and the fight against authoritarianism that is propagated through the novel. I hope you have got a general idea about the novel. You can read the novel as well as the secondary material suggested in the part further reading and uh, develop your own interpretation of the novel. Thank you.